Hello everyone, my name is Barrick, and I am one of the lead engineers and co-founders of the Redstone Development Foundation. And, and we've I got... Blue... <laughs> Sorry, I am Blue Dragon Doe. I am also one of the founders of the Redstone Development Foundation. Where the hell did you come from? Oh my god. Anyways. Uh, Barrick, would you kindly inform our audience as to what the hell we're doing? Absolutely. Okay, so to in this video, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to explain a little bit about how the gizmo functions. But we're going to start off with something pretty simple. A uh, simple latch, so that you can kind of get a basic idea. Right. Right now I'm standing on the button block that is the input line. Every latch has four lines running into it. Of course, all but three of them are completely necessary. Ha! Figure that one out. So we have the input, the reset, and then two outputs. This one in front is the standard output, and then this one in back is the inverted output. You will, however, notice that since the latch is rather symmetrical, this is all basically up to whichever you choose. So right now, the main outline is off. However, if I push this button, it turns on and stays that way. Now, this is rather obvious as to the demonstration. However, this can be used to represent a single binary bit. So this is in, this is reset, and then this is the state of the memory cell. Now, if we hit the reset, it just turns itself off again, which is how the gizmo resets its memory. Now, this may seem, well, kind of absurd. It's so simple. But the fact that it is simple means that it can be used in very complex things. Yet another logic puzzler for you. Okay, so we swapped out our texture pack uh, simply because it looks a lot better than the default one, and it's a lot easier to see the circuitry and everything that's going on. So, take it away, Blue. Thank you very much. Okay, here you can see one of the latches like we just showed you down there, except actually built into the circuit. If you look over here, this is the thingy that sends the data in. It is called an AND gate for those of you who know a little bit about logic. So this comes into the input side of our latch, which will then trigger over. However, you should notice that it appears to be on already. Well, this is actually because this is the inverted output. Since redstone torches naturally act like converters, we use this instead of having a repeater chain with another inverter on the end. Now, if you look along here, there are actually four different latches all along this length. They have different inputs, but they each have a connection to this rail in. This is the reset rail that we showed you before. They all also go out to this rather complicated system of rails. These are the output rails. Every single one of them corresponds to a layer, and they all connect between the latches and the output, which is over there. So here we are at the input bay again. Now, we're going to actually show you how this all works. The store button is hooked up to a monostable circuit, so that way that when you push it, it'll actually stay on for a decent amount of time and then shut itself off. Each one of these uh, switches is wired into one AND gate. Now, this is all well and good, except that you can't really do much with an AND gate unless, of course, the other input is high. So that's what our monostable circuit does. It sends an artificial input to every single one, which allows the signal from the input switches to pass through. Now, assuming that a signal has gotten through the AND gates, it travels to these stacks. These would be the input rails. Now, there's one that goes to every layer of the memory, and we'll show you why in a minute. Now, the input rails go over, and each one corresponds to its proper cell. However, you will notice that underneath it, in this rather rat's nest-like affair, there is another set of rails, which come from these two towers. Ah! Darn you, Barrick. <laughs> I just like pushing okay. you around, I guess. <laughs> okay, here we are at the bank's electric switches. You will notice that each switch goes into one of two sections. That would be this glowstone tower over here, and this slightly larger glowstone tower. Ah, hello. Now, you will also notice a third line, which is this reset switch. This is the reset line, which, if you follow, goes up there, and every layer is more or less identical, so you don't have to worry about that. And it goes through this AND gate. Now this AND gate determines which layer can be erased. Then it goes all the way along here and into the reset sides of all of our latches. 
Now, this might seem rather odd, since this happens on every level. Yet, not all of them are reset. This is because the bank's electric switches control the inputs into these exclusive OR gates. Now, if you know exclusive OR, basically, the input is only... Or, excuse me, the output is only true if both inputs are equal. Now, in this case, this one is always going to be an off input, as this one is going to be the one that is manipulated by the bank selector switch. So this whole thing will only send a positive signal out of this AND gate if this whole level is selected as being off. But since the switches are wired into every level, it allows us to create a method of addressing each level. So this level is already off, as you can see by this lantern. Now if we sent the reset, this will turn off and the AND gate will turn on and reset the level. However, this begs the question, how do we get different levels to have different values? Well, if I go up a level ahead of Barrick, <laughs> we have a different setup. You see on the one below, both of these were zero. This one has a torch in front of it. This is the singles position for the binary selection. If we go up another level, come back. Okay, there you go. Uh -huh. This one is on the other one. This is the twos selector. Now, logically above, it will have all three, but we don't need to show you that right now. So these will only be true when the input is both positive. Oh, excuse me. These will only be true when the inputs are equal. So we have them not being equal. Thus, the signal will not be able to get through for the reset over there. Now if we jump over to the other side, it is exactly the same thing. Two exclusive ORs. Each one is biased according to the level. However, if we teleport up there so we can get a better shot, you'll notice that each of these input rails is connected to an AND gate. And the other input of the AND gate is connected to a part of the uh, address tower over there. So if you follow a rail across, if this layer is true, then it will enable the signal from the input switches to get into the latches. That is the essence of how it is set. All right. Well, there's supposed to be an actual outro here, but when we were originally filming this segment, we forgot to film the outro. So, on behalf of Blue Dragon Tao and myself, thank you very much for watching. Keep an eye out for our next video, which we will be going over Gizmo 2, which is hanging out right over there. More compact, more efficient, less confusing, hopefully. Until then, happy building.